So spider silk is one of the strongest materials uh, known, and in fact its strength is uh, about that or even larger than the strength of steel. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating biological material to study because spider silk is a material that is essentially 100%, almost 100% composed from proteins. And proteins typically are weak materials, but spider silk is a, is a prototype material in nature that has the strength of steel, but it's made from these very simple and actually weak building blocks. If we're in engineering uh, trying to make materials that are as strong as steel, right, we typically use very strong chemical bonds, and that means we use, um, typically need a lot of energy to form these bonds. Now the spider does not do that. The spider eats protein, digests the protein, and essentially uses a, a liquid solution of that protein and spins a fiber, and that fiber is, is, is as strong as steel. So spider silk is a system in which we can actually make a material with exceptional strength but using only weak bonds. And what that means is we don't need high temperature, high energy processing to make the materials. You know, in the, in the early days, we used this as an, an analogy, it's essentially to explain how materials like silk become so strong. And it's really not because the proteins are very strong, but it's really because of the way these proteins are connected and the way they sort of form patterns. And we realized that it also can be applied to other things, and that includes language, uh, you know, art, many different forms of art, mm -hmm. in fact, and music. And so we're trying to see if there are unconventional approaches to designing things. Just think of any kind of popular melody. You know, it's enough to have a few tones, right? And you play them and you realize that's that piece of music. But if you play individual tones or just half the instrument it doesn't mean anything. So it's really the combination and the, the control and structure in space and time. And then we went in and we said, all right, now if we can show this, um, we should also be able to create our own music um, to reflect certain materials. And, and of course the, the, the composer wouldn't know about proteins, right? So we actually uh, told him about two building blocks or two entities, A and B, and we described the sequence. We described what they do to one another once you mix them. Right. And so we basically uh, informed him, in a very abstract sense, using this mathematical model, how um, these systems behave. And he then took this information and wrote music. When we listen to the music, we, we can actually recognize differences. So the music that sounds more harsh, um, in, in fact, reflects the protein that has uh, more of the A building block. And the A building block essentially is a building block that uh, forms very strong interactions with one another. The Bs are weakly interacting, and in fact, they actually don't like to form organized structures. The Bs um, like to form disorganized structures. And it, the, the sequence that has more B, some A, but more B, um, is sort of is reflected in the music by something more gentle. Right. And you can see this uh, sort of a, more of a, a smoother, a more friendly, gentle musical piece. Um, and and the, the resulting network that you see, uh, once, once you look at the fiber structure sort of in detail, you can see that it's a very well-connected network. So you can see the A's you know, sort of still make connections and they form these, these, these cross-links between the chains. However, there's enough freedom for these chains to, to actually connect to other, other protein chains and thereby form a, a good fiber by doing this experiment, by creating the music, we now know that these features are the ones that reflect a better fiber, a better silk fiber. And what we can then do is we ask the composer to emphasize on these. So can he now create a new piece of music, right, uh, with the same basic building blocks, but playing on this theme and essentially emphasizing the features that we now know make a better fiber, and the question is, can, they, can he actually come up with a design that we wouldn't come up with?